Good morning. Good morning. So, here's your coach, Carla Nicole. Happy Sunday. Wanted to just touch base with you really fast about something that I think is vitally important. Um, I want to talk about this because um, I do have different people that reach out to me wanting coaching. Um, they're really wanting to get centered with certain things they want done in their life. Um, they're also desiring to have, um, some changes made. And so <laughs> when I reach out to them and I ask them, okay, well, what's your schedule looking like? And they start giving me a long list of all kinds of activities they have going on and I'm like okay um you're a very busy person <laughs> so you reached out to me to get coached but it looks like you have absolutely no time to even sit down with me so my question is if you're that busy when do you have time to focus on you? Not about my coaching, but just period. You are constantly busy. And so I wanted to talk about this because I don't think people really realize that in order to make changes and in order to be focused on getting things prioritized in your life that you're tired of fooling with like uh, we can get down to all kinds of reasons like just financial issues or parenting issues or career issues or just all kinds of things that we really want to um, get fixed and then when you reach out to me you're wanting me to help you but I'm like well how do I help you when you don't have any time you're busy, 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 busy. And um, I get it. I understand that there's a lot of things that, that could be just um, very uh, obligatory. And I get that. But we have to do better with this. I think we need to start to focus on, you know, how important it is to set aside time for you your coaching experience with me trust and believe will be highly beneficial when you have time to do the work and what I mean by time I'm talking about you schedule it out you make sure that you're available you're focused you're in tune with what you're needing to do and you can get things done the problem is some of you are so busy, I don't even know how you have time to evil, even really meditate or <laughs> do anything in your life to really be um, fulfilled inside your soul. Um, I wrote on my coaching page today that there's a lot of people that are well, ac well accomplished, very successful, has all kinds of beautiful things that a lot of people would love to have. Um, they have a lot going on and a lot of beautiful um, experiences. However, when they finally stop focusing on a goal or they finally stop getting accomplished, so um, getting so focused on, you know, succeeding and successful and becoming successful, what happens is they start to be like, oh, I'm just not sure why I feel depressed. I'm not sure why I don't feel excited about life. I have everything everybody else would want. I'm able to travel. I, I have money. I have vehicles. I have a beautiful home. I have a marriage. I have children. I have this. I have that. And it's like, yes, you do. But what you don't have <laughs> is you don't have fulfillment inside your spirit. 
And when you don't have fulfillment inside your spirit, regardless of things that you have or successes that you accomplish, you're feeling depleted or you're feeling unfulfilled because a lot of times you're not taking time to stop and focus on soul searching and self reflection and self loving. So as long as you value things, you'll be cool. As long as you value the things you get, you'll be cool. But as soon as those things outside of you don't matter, and I'm talking about as soon as maybe the home you have you lose, or as soon as the car you drive goes out, as soon as something that you really enjoy is no longer enjoyable, you start to feel like, man, I'm not so... I'm not so fulfilled now. I'm not so excited about life now. I feel like I have all of this, but I'm just saddened. I have a depressed state of being. I'm just not able to feel joy. This is because of the fact that you are not loving you. And regardless of all the accomplishments, regardless of all the successes, regardless of how many people applaud for you, regardless of the atta girls, the atta boys you get, if you don't stop and set a time specifically for you, I'm telling you now, if any of those things falter or any of those things start to go to the wayside or any of those things are no longer significant in your life, you will feel so upset, saddened, unfulfilled because happiness doesn't come outside of you. Happiness is within you. So if you're so busy, 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 you're so uh, focused on achieving goals and and doing things hey arkenny and doing things that you really want to do that's fine but you have to sit down and focus on your self-love your self direction and again this is why i say all the time that when i'm working with clients i'm very big about telling them that you have to not just schedule with me for your coaching, but you also have to schedule the time for you during the day. We have 24 hours in a day, okay? But we usually have about 18 waking hours. But a lot of times we don't take advantage of the waking hours because normally we are working or we're doing something else. We're focusing on this. We got activities booked up all in our schedule and we never sit down and say, how am I feeling? What do I want to accomplish? What do I need in this life? We don't take the time for that because we're too busy. I got this to do. I got that to do. I got this to do. But when are you sitting down and scheduling your time? to do work for you. Here's the thing. We know what time we have to go to work every day. We know what time our doctor's appointments are. We know what time our dental appointments are. We know what time we have to do this and do that and all these other things, but we never have a schedule for ourselves. When are you quiet? When are you really soul searching? When are you really trying to figure out what is it I need to do to get fulfilled because like I said as long as your values are based upon anything outside of you you will always be happy right wrong <laughs> because when you find out that those things that you have or those people that's in your life or that arrangement you have going on can change you can lose it but in that if you lose that, do you lose you in the process? Yes, because you have attached your fulfillment, your happiness to that thing or that person or that relationship or your kids or everything outside of you. You connect your happiness, your joy, your fulfillment and your contentment to. Okay, 
So you have to start being mindful to sit down and schedule out the time you are focused on you, what you need, what you want. I am sitting, I have, I have two, well, maybe three videos right now where I'm telling you about the self love acts that you should be doing to help you focus on fulfillment, contentment, and loving you. They're all here. Okay, self-love acts, I don't get people piling up in my inbox asking me for them because it's not sexy. If I told you I'll give you all the acts to get a lover, you be in my inbox. <laughs> not realizing that self-loving is how you get a lover that's going to care about you. But again, that's not, that's not, people don't reach out to me for that. They reach out to me about their relationship issues and, da -da 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 and all this. But I'm here to tell you, that if you're not really focusing on truly taking it serious about your love of self, even if you have a beautiful love affair, it can, it can, it can vanish. It can vanish. I don't care how good of a love affair it is. Everything comes to an end. So with that said, when that vanishes, do you go with it? Or do you still have something to live for? Only you can answer that but again it's vitally important that you sit down and you take time every day to look inside of self to do the self acts self love acts you have to do them the reason why it's vital is because you can't love anybody and i'm talking about anybody you can't love anyone or anybody if you are not loving you Loving you requires you to look at you, <laughs> period. If you're not looking at you, if you think you're perfect, you're not. It's not true. So you have to look at yourself, which means you have to self-reflect. You have to look at who am I? What am I bringing to the table? I talked about this yesterday. What am I bringing to the table? In my love of self, how is my presence received by other people? When I walk in a room... Am I welcoming or do people want to vanish and disappear because of my energy, because of my lack of uh, compassion for others, because of my judgmental ways, because I always got something to say that's negative. Am I always too negative? That's huge. People don't want to be around people that's always negative. So are you getting those kind of responses or, or are you seeing people like, Ugh, here she comes or here he comes. I don't want to be around you or, or, or they don't really, they really start to figuring out excuses why they got to go. This is why I tell you all the time, you have to be paying attention to your value and your worth by doing the inner work. And I don't care how successful you are. <laughs> I don't care what kind of car, house, love affair, how many beautiful, successful children you have. I don't care about none of it because none of it matters if you're not fulfilled inside of you. Because there's a lot of parents that did a hell of a job with their kids, but they're, after their kids are gone, they don't know who they are. They put so much life into their kids that they lost themselves in their parenting because they didn't take the time to really soul search while parenting. They spend a lot of time focusing on pouring into their children and teaching them right from wrong and all of those things, which of course you should. However, you still as a parent have to still be looking at yourself because <laughs> it also helps to know, well, how am I doing as a parent? How are my children responding to me? Am I, am I sickening to my children? Do I nag them all the time? Do I bicker and complain all the time? Do I never give them any reason to feel joy in the home? When I come in the house, is my children to just deflating like oh what are you she's home now so oh my god everybody's got to be at attention or is it like oh mom is home like let me check on mom let me see what she's got going on these are the kind of things we need to do even as a parent just because we're parenting doesn't mean we lose self just because we're in a love affair don't mean we lose self we got to sit down and we got to really look at self we got to schedule out time and it, listen Okay, so you want to tell me you don't know how to schedule time, right? So we're going to play a little game today. We're going to put, uh, everybody that's watching, I want you to put a alert on your phone, a daily alert 
on your phone to where it says me time. I know everybody's watch. Most people that are watching me are watching me from their phone. So with that said, I would like to see you put an alert on your phone where you are alerted me time. Everybody do that after, after this call is over. Make sure you share this. After you get off of this call or off of this video call today, I want you to go in your phone and schedule me time. Now, it's up to you the duration of me time you are willing to give up to spend time with you, but it's vitally important you do this. You also need to write it on your planner. You also need to have it on a sticky note in your, in your bedroom, on your mirror. Whatever you got to do, you need to do it. Because if you don't, <laughs> you, are, you are attaching your happiness to something outside of yourself. I'm going to say it again. If you don't start to do this and schedule time for you, you are going to attach your happiness to someone else, to the health of your relationship, to the health of your parenting, to the health of your kids, whatever. It's going to be something outside of you that you attach your happiness to. But, but the, the problem with that is what are you going to do if those relationships or that relationship begins to go south and doesn't, isn't doing very well? Then what happens to your happiness then? <laughs> See, this is why I tell you guys all the time, it's vitally important that we pay attention to what we need in our relationship with self. It's hard, people, but it's not. When you really sit down and say, okay, did I journal today? Did I ask any thought-provoking questions to myself today? Why was I born? What am I here to do? Am I proud of myself? Not based upon who I am as a person and what kind of career I have or what accomplishes I make, accomplishments I've made, but am I proud of being in this being, in this wholeness in my, in my soul? Am I proud of that? If I didn't know me, would I like me? If I ever walked into a room and I was, I was just someone outside of myself, and I walked into a room, would I want to get to know me? These questions seem juvenile, maybe funny, maybe hilarious, but really they are serious questions you should be asking yourself. Because a lot of times we really don't know ourselves like that. And we should. Because when we understand the power we have with loving ourselves, Understanding how powerful we are when we put ourselves um, first and also put ourselves um, before anyone else, we start to see, oh my God, I never even thought about me. I never even thought, am I proud of me? We ask ourselves all the time, are we proud of our kids? People ask that question all the time. Parents know this. Are you proud of your kids? Oh my God, yeah, my daughter's doing this and my son is doing that. They're doing wonderful. Oh my goodness, my son's got a job. He's an engineer now. Da, 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 da. My daughter's doing this and she's accomplished and she's got this going on. Go okay, but what about you? Are you proud of you in the same degree that you're proud of your children? A lot of times we can't answer that because we really don't know. We, we really have a lot, a, a lot outside of self that we spend time applauding, but we don't really look at, am I really proud of being here and impacting lives? Am I proud of being here and really getting done something that I think can help somebody? It's, in, it's very important when you get to this, because like I said, if we don't take time for self, we lose self. Do you know how many clients I have that tell me they lost their self? <laughs> It's unbelievable. But the reason they lost themselves is they never put themselves first. They never even prioritized self at all, ever. And then I've had clients tell me like, well, I don't, need, I don't even know who I am. That's because you never, you never sought to find out. We, when we are looking for a love interest, man, we go hard in the paint to find out what they're doing, what's their job, what's their career. What, I mean, who are they? We look at, we look up all kinds of stuff, trying to see, well, what is it that they do? And 
how is it that they do this and do that? And we spend a lot of time trying to find out if we want to be with somebody. We want to find out everything we can possibly find out about that love interest, even when we're dating them. But boy, I tell my clients to start soul searching and looking into them. They're like, why would I do that? <laughs> Excuse me? Or better yet, if they have somebody. Well, I've already done all that already. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> Learning about self, searching in yourself, exploring yourself, getting to know yourself, trying to improve yourself should never stop. It's not something you get a certificate with at the end. When we're done doing everything we needed to do while we're here, we're out of here. So we need to be constantly, forever looking at self. Always. It's not, it's not just, oh, I look at self when I'm not so busy or I'll manage to get my time in with that later or I got to make sure I'm doing this for John and this for Jimmy and this for Tommy and this for... Listen, you're, you're putting everybody else before yourself. Would those people do the same for you? <laughs> this is why I say, and I'm getting out of here. It's very important that you sit down and you pay attention. Get this now. You pay attention to what you attach your happiness to. It's number one. It's number one. What's, what's your happiness attached to? Is your happiness and joy attached to your lover, your children, your, your career, your successes, your degree, your, your cars, your home your what what is your attachment that keeps you happy ask yourself these questions man i'm giving you raw truths because we don't really want to sit down and say oh i didn't know that i really have an issue with asking these intricate questions but you should you should ask yourself if something happened is my happiness gone then is it because if it's gone then that says a lot about why we have to look into into self we have to stop placing our happiness and our joy and our and our excitement and everything on something else or someone else because that's unrealistic i don't care if you're married I don't care if you're in a relationship. I don't care if you're a mom or whatever you are. You cannot be attached to that person bringing in your happiness. Because let me explain something. We will forever be disappointed as long as we spend our time trying to make sure our happiness is within somebody else. It's real shit. You have got to start putting you on the roster, on the schedule, pay attention and look at how am I received when I walk in a room? Do people embrace me or people running from me? Do people get excited? You can tell, you know, pay attention. You know how people respond when you come in the room. Are they excited to see you or are they thinking, oh God, here, here she comes, here he comes. Oh. <sighs> Because it's very important that you pay attention. <laughs> but again, when, when you notice that you're not well received, that's when you need to sit down and say, okay, I'm not real, well received in this environment right here, even if it's in your own home or if it's at your job or if it's in your, you know, whatever you got going on. Even if you walk in the room and you're like, mm, they're not receiving me well, then you've got, you've got to go and schedule yourself, schedule your time in for yourself, for me time, and then self-reflect. Self-reflect. You got to ask yourself, okay, what, why am, are people not receiving me well? What am I doing that is causing people to not stomach me right now? And that can be, I'm too bitey, too critical, I'm I'm casting off this ugly negativity. 
If all of those things are in place, then I need to look inside me and see what is the source of that negativity and what is the source of why I'm being judgmental. Because when we cast off judgment and when we cast off negativity, it's because something within ourselves we're not holding to a high regard, whatever that something is. So if we're frustrated about my love lives or we're mad about our kids not accomplishing what they need to be doing or we're frustrated at work because we're not succeeding at work and we're not getting our promotion or whatever those things are you have to sit down and say that negativity i'm spewing out of my spirit when i'm spewing that out of my spirit now people in my presence feel it and it's not received well they're feeling like ugh. I can't stomach he or she. So with that said, that at that point, you have to say, what's my source of negativity? Why am I upset? Why am I angry? Why am I constantly feeling some type of way? Why am I judging other people? Why am I critical? And then you have to see what do I do? What's my steps to change this? What are my steps to change this? And once I sit down and think about the steps I can do to change it, not for other people per se, but for you to get out of your negative funk, for you to get out of your state of being. Because we can only be the ones to change us. We can't change how people respond to us. We can change how we are inside. It just takes a while to take each step to improve on self. Okay? And then if these people are important to you, be it your children, be it your man, woman, whatever, if these people are significant in your life, then you want to sit back and say, okay, the rapport isn't going well right now. What do I need to do to fix me? And then after I decide that, then I have to say, okay, now once I fix me, I'm not doing it to accomplish something. I'm doing it to improve something. Because when we get accomplished driven, when it comes to rapport, you're never going to get the award. You're never going to get the award, even in a love affair. If you think that if I change me in a better way and everything like this, my man is going to now marry me, as an example. <laughs> even if you get married, honey, those evolutions and changes and, and, and reinventions and resolutions have to continue throughout the marriage. You aren't just going to get married and whoo, everything's perfect. We are together now. That's the, what? What? That's not how that works. Even if you improve yourself, even if you improve your reactions, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to gain anything other than maybe a better rapport. Other than maybe a better understanding. And in that, can the intimacy do better? Yes. Can you have a better result in your relationship? Yes. But that doesn't mean that that's it. <laughs> See, one of my things that I've been really meditating on is that we are so driven by accomplishments, by, I mean, awards, trophies. <laughs> in, in, in the real life, in, in your real life, you don't get trophies for stuff. You don't. You have to realize that when you are in a relationship, when you're, when you're parenting, when you're dealing with an elder parent and you're the younger parent, I mean, the younger child, when you have these different elements of relationships in your life, you do not get accomplishments. You don't get trophies for it. Just because you and your man or you and your woman are wonderful today, it could be at the end of the evening, y'all are into it. And then you're like, oh, I'm so frustrated with such and such. And I was, everything was fine. Okay. This too shall pass. <laughs> it, nothing is going to stay the same. I don't care what kind of relationship you're in. I don't care if you're happy alone. Even with that, we still get on our, on our own nerves. So even in that, even being single, we can still feel frustrated. Even single. Because now, it's not one person we're dealing with. It's many. And now some people are cool. Some people are not. Some people are down. Some people are, people are doing this and that. You cannot attach your your level of happiness to outside sources. Okay? So, 
with that said, we have to be mindful that loving self comes first. In loving of self, we have to also realize that that is going to be constantly a challenge and a ongoing, ongoing life relationship. <laughs> now you want to do death do your part. Now that's real shit right there. Loving you, relationship with yourself is forever till you leave here. That's guaranteed. Might not guarantee that you're going to be a, a parent for life, a, a, a man in love with his woman for life. You may not have none of those for life. However, you will, damn it, be with you for life. So we got to put, we got to prioritize. Okay, I know for a fact, I will always be with me. <laughs> so I got to get me together. So every day I need to prioritize. Did I do my me time today? Did I check on me today? How am I feeling on the inside? What am I saying to myself? Am I proud of me? Am I doing what I need to do to make sure I'm good? What is my contentment threshold? Uh-oh. What's my contentment threshold? Do I know it? Do I know what contentment is? Oh, I'm going to go live on that one. <laughs> go live and go in on your threshold of contentment. How do you know when you're content? How do you know when you, no matter what's outside of you, whoo, I love me, honey. When do you, when, what does it take to get there? And then what does it, what does it take once you get there? What does it take to maintain that contentment? It's a whole nother that's a whole nother conversation. I'm not doing that today. <laughs> but I will tell you this. When I do talk about contentment threshold and how important it is to realize that even loving you, you're going to have moments in time where you're frustrated with self, where you're not feeling like you're doing enough for self, where you're feeling like I really, I really need to be getting on the ball about certain things. You're going to have moments of frustration with self. Let me tell you something, whether you're single, married, in a relationship, in a situation, in a uh, entanglement or whatever, I want y'all to understand this. There is no relationship, even with yourself, where you are not going to be disappointed, where you're not going to be hurt. Do you know that we don't realize that we hurt ourselves? when we don't forgive ourselves. A lot of times when people tell me they have trust issues, you know what that tells me? That tells me your trust issues are not about the other person, but it is about how you trust yourself, allowing other people to come into your life. That's what it tells me. You fear relationships, you feel getting hurt. It's okay. It's just what it is though. And in that fear, we make decisions about, I'm not going to do this because I don't want to involve myself with her or him or whatever. And a lot of times it's coming from a space of fear. The fear comes from, I was doing this in my past and I'm afraid it's going to come back to bite me. Or it's, I don't like feeling hurt. I don't like giving myself away to somebody and then they hurt and burn me. Or I've had many experiences where I've given and given and given and all I get is somebody taking and taking and taking. Okay. But that doesn't mean that even if you stay single for life that you're not going to feel no pain. <laughs> you're going to get pain one way or the other. Even when it's by you. And what I mean by by you is when you don't forgive yourself for your own mistakes, for your own stuff now and in the past guess what? You're hurting yourself. When you don't prioritize self-loving, you're hurting yourself. So you can't avoid pain in life. You're going to get it. You're going to get pain. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get saddened. You're going to get grief. You're going to get, you're going to have to deal with somebody dying in your life. It's what it is. You can't avoid pain. <laughs> it's coming. Ready or not. So again, we have to get back to understanding 
that loving self requires you to take step by step by step priority and setting up time that you're spending with yourself alone. And I'm not talking about sitting alone just with not any thoughts. Sitting time, sitting down and looking at you. Question yourself. If you want a relationship, there's nothing wrong with that. If you don't want a relationship, there's nothing wrong with that either. But ask yourself, whatever decision you're making, beliefs, and expectations you have in those dynamics or in that thinking, you have to start dissecting why it is you think the way you do. Because you're going to have to deal with it. If you're single, you're most likely going to have to be uh, thinking about, well, there's certain pieces of my life that I have to now figure out how to maintain without somebody in my corner. Listen, I have an elder father that my mom passed in 03. He's a single man. And my dad has been doing well. However, one of the things that he has expressed to me is that, you know, it's tough when you can't bounce off somebody certain things you're trying to resolve and fix in a house or in your life so it's not easy since your mom passed because there's nobody for me to bounce on and what i'm talking about bounce on is ex you know different types of things that's going on different routines that we would do different things we need done everything's on me now so for when when people tell me that they want to stay single and that's fine i i have to tell them the reality is being alone and single is fine. You can find it is a functional arrangement. You can be alone. That's true. However, what are you going to do about your sexual needs? What are you going to do about your social needs? How about what are you going to do about your financial questions and things that you need to focus on? What are you going to do about those things? What are you going to do about building your purpose and building in and doing things? Are you going to be single and not want nobody around and I don't trust nobody and I'm not asking nobody nothing? That's silly. That's ir that's unrealistic. So th these are questions for those that want to only be single for the rest of their life and that's up to them. But do understand that comes with, that comes with a cost. You're going to have to bounce everything off of yourself and your decision making is going to be from outsources. Some people will care about you and some will not. Some people will be down for you and some will not. <laughs> so guess what? You have a high likeliness that you're going to get hurt. Even in business, even in social circles, there's no avoiding pain. You're going to have some. So the, the truth of the matter is, how can I really live this life and focus on what I need and focus on what I'd like to have and how do I get into my truth about what is important to me a lot of times people just don't want to deal so they run from it if I don't have a person to deal with then I don't have to worry about it okay that's true but you're avoiding you're avoiding. It's not that you don't want a relationship. It's that you don't really want the so-called headache. But all, all relationships don't require headache. Sometimes when you learn self and you really take the time to deep dive and learn about you and what you need, you'll find somebody that also knows what they need. And if the needs match, then guess what? There's a more harmonious engagement. There's more of, remember what I said earlier, when you are in a arrangement or when you walk into a room, right? I said we can cast off negativity or we can cast off love because we love within. So when we're casting out this love, right, for self, when we walk in a room, people feel that. Wow. Oh my God, there you are. I haven't seen you Or it's, oh, there he is. Whew. When we invite loving of self, we definitely invite people of like-mindedness. 
when we're open to loving someone else and that someone is also doing the same, guess what? It can definitely mesh and become something of solidity, something of beauty. But again, it comes down to prioritizing self. You have to, and what I said earlier is make sure you share this video. And also what I said earlier is when you get off of this video with me, I want you to go into your phone. And I want you to schedule an alert on your phone that says, me time. It needs to be done when you get off of this video with me. Type it in. Me time. Daily. Whatever time of the day, you need to get me time scheduled in. Because if you don't, you're going to find yourself constantly frustrated by life. And that should not be your your pursuit in life we should be excited about waking up <laughs> excited about what do i need to do today let's go we get excited about going on a trip we get excited about doing this and going on vacation but we can never be excited about jumping out of bed to just be excited to learn about me what am i gonna do today that's gonna change a life even damn it if it's one what am i gonna do today Real shit. I want you guys to, seriously, I want you guys to put an alert in your phone. And I want you to schedule it daily to check yourself on your me time. Listen, me time has to be scheduled in because apparently when y'all come to me wanting coach, y'all always have to tell me, well, I got this going on, this going on, this going on, this going on. You say, you that busy? You do know coaching is going to require at least two hours of your time. And then you need to be scheduling some me time. Your results may vary based upon your dedication to you, not me. Do you want do you want this work or not? <laughs> oh, well, I got this to do and this to do and this to do. Okay, but do you realize as long as you put yourself on the back burner and you really don't want to focus on what really it is about making sure your life is fulfilled and you're having a level of contentment in life, you're going to continue to have this whole misery going on all relationships aren't miserable stop telling yourself that that's not true there's a lot of wholesome fulfilling relationships that are dynamic but it first comes from the person loving self first just what it is when you love you it's easy for people to love you back i'm just saying make sure y'all share this video um Again, you guys need a coach, inbox me. I am an inbox away. And like I said, set your alerts for your phone, on your phone, for me time, every day, daily. And only you can determine how long of that duration you want to be in your me time, but you need to be scheduling it in. That's ridiculous. I shouldn't have to be figuring out when do you breathe? <laughs> when do you meditate? How do you possibly think about these thought-provoking questions I gave you today? How do you think about this stuff when you're this damn busy? We have 18 waking hours. I'm just saying. I'm out of here, guys. Make sure you share this video. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off, guys. Best kept.